What's up guys? We're back today with another video uh, on the Bimmer, of course. Um, today we're getting into a little more serious of stuffs. So what we actually, we actually got in the mail was a turbo oil scavenge pump. And what that's gonna do is um, pretty much solve our gravity drain issues. My turbo is too low to gravity drain from the turbo to the oil pan. So I chose to run a scavenge pump. And here, I'll actually show you guys what a scavenge pump is. I've actually got it mounted up. We'll talk about it here in just a minute. Pretty much what that does is it pulls the oil out of the turbo and then pumps it back into your engine, of course. So with that, I won't have to worry about gravity draining since it's not a top mount turbo and it would be quite difficult to gravity drain from the position it's in. Waiting on some other parts to get in and today we're gonna to be wiring up the scavenge pump. So stay tuned for that and we'll get right to it. So like I said, I did take the turbo back off. I got this little two inch to three inch reducer here to try to come off here, but I still don't think I have enough room between here and the manifold. So got a two inch 90 degree coming. Hopefully that solves that issue. Another issue I was having was on this mount, you can kind of see I shaved it down a little bit. That was hitting the turbo. So I just went ahead with a little grinder, shaved it out just a little bit because it was barely, barely touching. Just been waiting on some parts. Yeah, let's get into the scavenge pump. So this is a scavenge pump right here that I got off of uh, Schnitz Racing. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, right here, sent me some cool stickers. Yeah, so this is scavenge pump. So uh, camera's gonna be upside down. As you can see, there's an arrow. So pretty much the turbo will drain into here. It will be sucking oil from the turbo into this pump, pumping it and then pushing it back out of this. That's our focus today. Hopefully we can get that running here soon. Turn it on, make some noise and make sure it's working. So what we're actually doing right now, fitting up a feed off the positive terminal um, to a 30 amp fuse. And then from that, we're gonna be using a little rocker switch that lights up with the LED. And then from that, we're gonna run it to a, um, a relay. And then from the relay, we're gonna run it to our three and a half amp uh, inline fuse as well. And then that's going to run to the scavenge pump. Now, the reason I want to run a light switch so that uh, one, I can just kind of turn it on, prime it before I turn the engine completely on, get all the oil sucked out before or after I turn off the uh, car. So there's no oil pooling back into the turbo. So let's get on that. It's going to be a long wire. I know it's going to look really weird. You guys are probably not going to like how I'm going to do this, but positive wire all the way up to the dashboard, right down the center following this wire that I made. And then we're gonna run that to the switch and the switch to the relay and then run our wires back to the center where the back seat used to go, down to the left and down out a drain hole. This is uh, actually the OEM skid plate that I'm gonna use and I bolted it up real nice. I just drilled two holes in there, got some washers, some nuts and some screws. Put it on there real nice, it's just, um, it's just temporary for now. I don't have these back, these back two holes used, but um, I mean, I cinched it down pretty good. As you can see, I mean, it's not moving at all. And this is, like I said, just temporary for right now. So that's the pump, Schnitz Racing. It's about 200 bucks. Again, it's not needed if you can utilize gravity drain, but I decided I don't want to go through it with all that mess. So we're using a pump. So we're going to get to the wiring. Um, I'm probably not going to show you guys the wiring because it's pretty boring, but I will show you when it's all finished up and we'll have a nice little picture and hopefully a video of it turning on. So we have it all wired up. Um, as you can see, we tapped onto the uh, positive cable there, the battery, and we ran that up to an in inline fuse. We ran that to a 30 amp fuse because that's what our switch calls for. As you can see, it's going to run right up in here. And it goes up to our switch, which is right here. So we can switch on, switch off. And we have that running to a relay. Uh, if you guys have any questions about how to set this up, just let me know. I'll tell you how. Um, it's pretty simple, though. You just pretty much use the four pins on here. Each one goes to a certain one. Then if you come over here, you can open up your radio wiring harness. It actually is, like, for an extra, like telephone wire harness or something so it's under your center console uh under the coin tray part obviously my car strip as you can see 
so I didn't have to do any of that, but I pulled back the connector. The purple and white wire is a 12 volt uh, ignition. So you wanna tap into that for the positive. Put that to your uh, relay. And then as far as a negative, I just put it on, tune that onto the body. Ran my negative for my switch, negative for the relay, and then the negative for the pump. Now, what I did was there's a, a hole here, which a screw actually went in originally. So if you can't, if you don't have all this stuff pulled out like I do, you might not be able to do it like this. Oh, by the way, we have another inline fuse, three and a half amp fuse. That's what our pump calls for. Anyways, back to this hole right here. So we went down the hole with the uh, negative in the positive wire to the pump. And now I can take you guys underneath the car to show you how I have the pump set up. All right, sorry if the camera's shaky or whatever, I'm laying underneath the car. Anyways, that hole comes down back here behind your transmission, a little bit under the drive shaft. I ran that underneath some of the heat shielding. Ran it across on the cross member of the transmission. And then I ran it to the pump. So here's our pump. We'll have our uh, oil feed going into that side. Oil exit, leaving that side. And going up to our dipstick right up there. So now we're gonna plug in the battery, turn the ignition on. Hopefully when we turn the switch on, you should hear this pump firing up. All right guys, battery's all plugged in. Got everything plugged up. So the pump is actually directly below us. So when we switch this on, we should hear, or at least see it light up and then hear the pump engage hopefully. So here goes nothing, here we go. Well, we got the light to light up. but I'm not sure the relay is clicking on, so we'll have to see. I didn't put the key in the ignition. Of course, the wire we have into, uh, into, the, uh, into the relay is ignition on. So we're gonna go ahead and turn, put, turn the ignition on to position two. Hopefully that should give us enough power to turn the pump on, and once everything quiets on, we'll flip the switch, see if we hear it. Here we go. All right, let's see what she's got. Yep, there's the noise, we hear it. So the pump comes on right when we hit the switch. Love it. That's the easy way to set up your scavenge pump for a switch. And now we're gonna uh, melt all these connectors in, solidify everything, put everything back in, and get this thing that much closer to running. Hell yeah. All right, so we got everything all finalized, everything buttoned back up. We are gonna be use, utilizing this hole for our uh, gauges. As you can see, the ignition's on. Got our switch mounted up real nice like right here. Pump on, pump off. Really easy, really simple. Uh, you just gotta go buy the hardware. Besides that, it's just a little know-how and you can easily get one of these switches in for your scavenge pump. That way it's not always on. Um, you can hear it priming before you start the um, car completely. Uh, also, with the ignition off, the pump will not stay on. So, just in case you left the pump on, um, took the key out, and shut the car and walked away. Well, this light might still on, so it might kill your battery, but your pump's not going to stay on, which is good. Because you don't want your pump just accidentally running the entire time that you go inside and eat dinner. All right, so it's been a couple days. I've been waiting on some stuff to show up, which didn't, but this did. Um, this was larger than what I expected to show up, but essentially I needed a two inch 90 off the turbo since the turbo housing uh, was two inch 90 off there. So I ordered, you know, two inch 90 silicone pipes. So I can mock that up. But what I didn't expect, there's 10 of them to show up. Like, what am I gonna do with 10 of these? I'm gonna fit one of these up, see if it fits a lot better than the two to three inch. And uh, hopefully we got some more clearance. We're gonna fit the header back up later in tonight. So, I don't know. I still don't think we're gonna have enough clearance. We might right here, but 
I'm thinking I'm gonna have to cut this. So, you know, I got 10 tries to get it right, so I should get it right. But we're moving in the right direction. Before we had zero clearance, now, you know, that might fit, honestly. We're gonna have to mock it up with this one first, and then if it doesn't fit, we're gonna have to cut it up. So, pretty much waiting for somebody to get here because it is almost impossible to get that thing up in there by yourself with a turbo on it. Without a turbo on it, piece of cake. With a turbo on it, good luck. All right, guys, so got the manifold mocked back up in there, and as you can see, um, might be able to see, so I can get the camera in there got our 90 on there but we're still having some clearance issues uh, with where the turbo is clocked at you can kind of actually see on camera right there it's hitting the bottom of the manifold so actually the turbo needs to get reclocked this way and then that that 90 should fit perfectly and then all we're gonna need is a little 90 inch piece we've got our 2 inch to 3 inch 90 off of there so we'll pretty much essentially have this right up in here, coming off of that two inch. And that's gonna go down to our existing 180 pipe and into the intercooler. So that should pretty much solve that issue right there. Another little idea I'm having, I'm just uh, putting this out there, see what you guys think about it, is right here, you can kind of see the flange, is the wastegate flange, right? So take your wastegate and you try to fit it down in there there's literally no room for it like there's no way there's the frame is there it runs all the way back you can't you can't fit that in there so what I was thinking was actually taking um, a pipe like this first section this 90 degree section here and having it come off of the manifold here and then having this side here float up into here where I can mount my wastegate right here. And then I could do a single pipe exit through the roof or through the hood actually. So that way I could have my exhaust going out the back and then I could also have a little hood dump action with the wastegate. That way we can get flames out the hood and also flames out the rear of the car, which would be pretty dope. So I'm gonna see if I can make that happen. See if I can get somebody to fabricate me a pipe coming this way and then up so we can mount the wastegate right there, which would be pretty awesome. Um, things we got left, uh, about to order a set of injectors, return the old old set that came in, they weren't the right ones. Uh, got a fuel pump that's coming in. And besides that, we just gotta drop the oil pan, drop the subframe so we can do a new oil pan gasket and get that tapped. So we can put a bung on the side because I did decide we're actually gonna be using the oil pan instead of the dipstick tube. I just, I don't like the idea of using that and I don't like the angle that it's at. I feel like it might cause issues for draining. So we're just gonna go ahead and opt out of that option. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys hit that like button, that subscribe button, and make sure you guys hit your notification bell so you guys get a notification every time I post a video so you can stay up to date with this build. But uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're getting there. Uh, we're just waiting on a couple more funds to come through, order some more parts, get everything together and running. And uh, we should have some you know rolling videos here pretty soon but that's it guys thanks so much for watching we'll catch you guys next time on addicted to cars